Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite MCP setups. It has to do with project management, with product management. It's for anyone that uses Gantt charts or Kanban boards. I think this setup is so cool and I can't wait to show you. So in this video, we're going to talk about my Notion MCP setup with Cloud Desktop. You may use Monday.com. You might use Jira. You might use Asana. You might use Trello. If you're a project manager, a product manager, you more or less know what I'm talking about here. I think that this video will help you understand the true power of MCP servers beyond what we see with things like Cursor or Windsurf or just the coding environments. Because what MCP servers do essentially is connect LLMs, in this case, Cloud, to external tools, external systems. Until now, what we've been doing, more or less, is chatting with ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, whatever, getting an output, and then copying and pasting it into whatever thing we're using, or using its advice and following instructions how to build something or how to configure something, and it's very disconnected. And what MCP does is allows you to connect these LLMs to these external tool systems, whatever. The possibilities really are endless. And I think this video will make that clear for you. This is a real productivity setup. So Notion, for those of you that don't know, is an all-in-one workspace. It basically is a blank slate, a blank page where you can create notes, databases, task lists. You can collaborate with others. I've used it in so many different scenarios. It's really, really cool. It's actually so cool and so powerful that Notion in and of itself is a bit overwhelming because there's so much you can do with it, but sometimes setting it up is confusing and overwhelming. And I use Notion for many things, from writing scripts, writing down ideas, to creating databases, dashboards. I'll create a database on clients, on videos I'm creating, on sponsors. There's so many things you can do with it. Notion has its own AI implementation that I didn't find really useful, but now that we give Claude the ability to modify and edit, it makes it even better than Notion's own AI feature. And it's free. So I'm just gonna show you how I do my tracking for product management or project management within Notion. And I do this by dictating with Aqua Voice to Claude, which connects to Notion via MCP server and it creates the whole thing. I'm just gonna show you how it looks right now. And then I'm gonna show you how to set up yourself. Okay, so we're in Claude desktop. So we're just gonna trigger Aqua Voice in Claude. Okay, you have access to Notion via an MCP server. I want you to create a new page for software development that is kind of like a product management slash project management board. It should have the ability to be used like a Kanban board. You can use sequential thinking. You, you could use Brave Search to help figure out what columns and rows there should be in there. And you could also fill in mock data. Let's go. So just pressing enter and let's see what happens. And while this is running, I just want to say you could obviously connect this to your already created Notion pages and databases, and you could be very specific about what you wanted to create. I just want to give us a basic example here. So we'll give it access to sequential thinking. So right now it's using sequential thinking to break down what a product management Kanban board looks like. It's using Brave Search to search that. And you don't need to use sequential thinking in Brave Search here. I'm just using this for the example, showing you how they all connect. I just want to show you, this is my Notion automated MCP pages. We have a task tracker, YouTube sponsors, consulting clients, video collection tracker, and two other deprecated things I built. So now let's just click allow for this chat. So it's now accessing Notion. Let's just look at the steps really quickly. Let me plan my approach to creating a Notion best practices, software development, Kanban board, Notion templates. It's doing all the research for us. Software development, Kanban board, essential column statuses. Based on my research, I've identified essential elements. Now I'll design the actual Notion page structure. Now I'll implement this in Notion by first creating a new page, setting up the main software development project database. It's amazing. Okay, it's done. I've created a comprehensive software development project management board in Notion with Kanban functionality. Here's what I've set up. This is so cool. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so now we're inside the software development project management board that was just created by Claude. As you see here, it filled in a lot of dummy data. Here are the columns I made. Task, assigned to, date range, due date, end date, notes, priority, status, story points, tags, performance, database, front end, UI, UX. It's so cool. And this is just the first shot, right? Now, I added another view, and this is the Kanban board. So this is kind of like Jira or Trello or Asana, pretty much. This is the way I work. You have a backlog, you have to do, you have in progress, you have code review, QA testing done. So just to show you how much further this can go, let's say I just want to tell Claude to now add things to the database. So let's say we want to move implement user authentication system to code review. In the database that we created here, 
move implement user authentication to code review. Let's see what happens. It's thinking, boom, see that? That's so cool. Let's do another one. Add dark mode to the backlog. I've added implement dark mode theme to the backlog in your Kanban board. Here are the details of the new task. It added all the dummy data. So implement dark mode. Now, one other thing I want to show you is that you could also have it create Gantt chart. It's insane. So because we added date ranges here, we added a timeline view, which is essentially just a Gantt chart. And look at this. So cool. You could just move it just like a regular Gantt chart. It is so freaking powerful. So the possibilities here are endless. And again, it doesn't have to be for software development. It could be for whatever you're creating databases for. I created a database to collect videos from my dad's friends and family wishing him happy birthday and did the whole thing with the same exact workflow. So your imagination is your limitation. You could do so much with this. And again, setting this up with Notion manually is possible and we've been doing it for years, but now having Claude do it for us and do the research and figuring it out, it's just so cool. It saves so much time and you could just spend more time working and building and doing what you're doing instead of figuring out how to set up Notion or whatever you decide to connect MCP to because Claude or whoever supports MCP in the future will be able to do all the hard work for you. Okay, so now let me show you how to set it up. Now, this MCP server is not an official server. This was created by Suco. I hope I'm saying that right. Because MCP servers are so easy to make, a lot of people are making them and you'll find a lot of them online, but they don't always work. And there's also a privacy risk because you're taking other people's code and putting it in there. So when you're using community made MCP servers, I highly suggest doing your research, checking to see, for example, here, how many stars it has, how many pull requests, how many issues. You want to see that it's an active repo and you want to see that it's maintained and the community is playing with it. So here they see 254 stars. I know that I'm not the only person using it. I know that other people have tested it. And here that I see that it's last updated last week, I know it's still being maintained. So it's not something that someone made and threw away. So I've been using this one for a while. There's plenty out there. I like this one. I'll drop a link to this GitHub page in the description below. Pretty much tells you exactly how to set it up in English or in Japanese. We're gonna do the English one. First things first, you have to have a Notion account. You go to your Notion's integration page. So you have to click this link and log into Notion and you click new integration. And just so you know, the way I set this up is I didn't give it access to all of my Notion. I gave it access to a specific Notion page. And in that Notion page, it can do whatever it want, but it doesn't have access to the rest of my Notion pages. And this way, if for whatever reason it messes up or deletes stuff, I'm not gonna spend too much time worrying about it because everything else is safe. And you can be very granular on what access you give it and also what permissions you give it. So we'll do that really quickly. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna make our own Notion page and this is the only page we're gonna give it access to. So let's just call this MCP trial. You could call it whatever you want. So now we're gonna to go to our Notion integrations page. You log into your account via the web and you create new integration. And you can do associated workspace it's in my Notion, Jared's Notion. Type is internal. And we're gonna call the integration MCP trial. Press save, great. So now we go to configure settings. So what we need here is the internal secret code. It's like an API key for that matter. Now, what's important here is capabilities like permissions. So I see just leaving read, update, insert, and I'm leaving on read user information, including email addresses. All right, so we're gonna save this key. So now that we have our internal integration secret, which is like our key. So we're gonna add the integration to our workspace. So the same situation we do here, and this is what we've done with every other MCP server. So if this is your first MCP server, copy this whole thing. But if you already have other MCP servers set up, just copy from here. So you don't have the top two brackets and you don't have the bottom two brackets. You copy this and you go to your code editor. Now I like to add my MCP servers to Claude via VS Code. Let's just open that up. And as you see, I already have mine set up. So I have it set up after my Tefili MCP server. So what you do is you just add a comma after its last bracket and you paste it in and then you paste in your API key, your secret key. And that's what we got from right here. Just show it, copy it, and you paste it in to here, which is blurred out for you. But make sure you add a comma after if you have another server after. If not, you don't have to add a comma. You save and you restart Cloud Desktop. So now you should have more tools than you had before. If this is your first MCP server, then you should have a few. I have a bunch of different MCP servers installed already. So you'll find them in here and you just scroll down. And eventually we'll see Notion. Okay, so the final part of this process is connecting the MCP server back to the Notion page we created in the beginning. So what you do is you go to your Notion page you created, click these three dots, you scroll down on the bottom, you go to connections and you just type the name of the integration you made. So we're gonna just type in trial and there we see MCP trial. MCP trial will have access to this and all trial pages. So the point here is you give it access to one page and it can create as many trial pages as it wants. 
It's really cool. So you press confirm and boom, you're ready to go. So the possibilities with MCP servers are endless. Adding it to Notion is so powerful. I use it so much. And this is just another piece of the puzzle of my product management workflow with MCP servers using Claude, using Cursor using the PRD creator. And just imagine connecting this with cursor with your other MCP tools. As you see here, you're able to daisy chain them. You're able to put them all together. So imagine being able to tell cursor or Claude, hey, build this feature and then update the Kanban board. It's so freaking cool. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope that MCP servers have now clicked for you if they haven't until now, because it's not just for development. There's so many possibilities here. You could connect LLMs and Claude to anything. Hopefully OpenAI will also implement MCP servers because it's open source. It is the future. It, to me, it feels like the beginning of the App Store back when iPhone just came out, like the second version of the iPhone where they added the App Store and then everybody started developing apps. And MCP servers are even easier to create than apps. And what's great about this is now the LLMs are out of the sandbox. You, you can connect them to whatever you want, assuming they have an open API or you're building your own tools. But the possibilities here are really endless. This video was sponsored by Aqua Voice. That's what I use to dictate to Claude what I want to do. As you saw, that also saved me a lot of time. I didn't have to type. I was just able to verbally dump and say exactly what I wanted to Claude and let Claude do all the work for me. So I'll drop a link to Aqua Voice in the description below as well. I highly recommend starting to use AI dictation within your workflow, either within coding environments or LLMs or writing emails or messages. It just makes that whole workflow so much better as well. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. It helps me grow the channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.